The New York Times called our next guest an award-winning actor and the fourth most interpreter of the works of the legendary playwright August Wilson. And now he will actually play the late playwright in the new show, How I Learned What I Learned. Ruben Santiago Hudson, welcome to Arise Entertainment 360. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So as Shannon mentioned in the intro, the New York Times called you the foremost interpreter of August Wilson's work. What do you make of that distinction? And what is it about his work that you're so passionate about it? What, what, it, what is it? Well, the distinction in itself, I don't know if it's absolutely true, but so many people that are out there doing August's stuff, uh, I know that I have a tremendous passion for the work. I have a certain amount of knowledge and experience with being with him for so many years. He's written over three, four roles for me. I've directed all of his plays or been in them. So I, I, I take that compliment, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, it's a blessing there just to be involved with August, and I just want to make sure that I always honor him and his legacy by doing the best I can with his work when I have it. Talk to us about the importance of his work to the theater world and to the culture at large. August Wilson changed the whole landscape of American theater. He, he wrote ten plays, nine of which have been to Broadway. No other playwright has ever done that. Uh, these plays are decade by decade, over a century, about a specific people in a specific place. Mm -hmm. He was uh, not only a, a, a brilliant writer, but a, a wonderful humanitarian, very generous human being, and a person that, um, that uh, celebrated our people in a way that has been unparalleled. Mm. And now you're playing, also, uh, you're playing Wilson in the new play, How I Learned What I Learned. How did you land that role? And is it true he handpicked you? Yeah, uh, well, I'm not playing him. What I'm doing is telling his story, and, and mm. so what I do is walk in his shoes. Mm -hmm. What happened was when he wrote this play for himself, it was a mm -hmm. solo work, when he uh, became terminally ill, he wanted someone to continue the, the journey with the play because he knew that he would not be able to. Mm -hmm. So he called me and asked me would I do it, and I immediately said no because it was his play and I, and it, and I was afraid of it. You know, Why were you afraid? Because I thought people would look at me and think that I was going to play him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a task, that it would be insurmountable. So uh, I just said, you know, August is your play. And he said, I want you to do it. And once you do it, it'll be open to the world. He said, but you're the person I want to do it. And eight years later, well, it took me eight minutes to say, yes, I'll be there and <laughs> I'll do it. But eight years later, I came to, to put his death in perspective and, and realize at this point in my career, it's time to do it. So with Jim Houghton, along with the estate and the director, Todd Kreidler, uh, we put it together and now we're having a great celebration of August's life. Now you said eight years later, why did it take so long? Because first of all, you have to come to grips with, with a person who you, you, you absolutely cherish and love mm -hmm. and, and their demise and then you have to be able to, to put that in, a, in, a, in its perspective that you can get up and, and pay the rightful tribute to that person mm -hmm. and then have the courage to go up and do it. And it takes a while, you know, actors like to have a lot of bravado and think that they can jump up and everything, you know, they got the world on the string. But no, any actor that, 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 that will be a great actor must have humility and must be able to understand, you know, uh, that there are fears and there are trepidations and you have to be able to attack them, approach them, prepare for them and succeed at them. You know, he passed away of liver cancer in 2006, but off camera, you still speak about him in the present tense. Why is that? Because he reveals himself daily, nightly, mm -hmm. and all through the day, the power and strength of his personality, his persona, and his wonderful charm, his wit, his integrity uh, prevails beyond death. What was he like to work with? He was an incredible man to work with. He was the kind of human being that no one, no writer in, in my 35 years of being an actor has ever shown me the love as a human being, the humanity uh, to celebrate some, the African American in me, the Boricua in me, mm. you know, more than August. August exemplified what it meant to be distinguished and, and be full of integrity. Mm. And so to work with him was always a challenge in pushing you to the next level mm. to believe that you are from kings and queens. I loved August and I'm sure that a lot of us do and we have to carry on his mission. Now, because you all were so close, was it harder or easier for you to play this role? Well, it, it was, uh, I wouldn't say easy or hard. It, it, it was the same challenge as, as any role I take on, whether Shakespeare, Chekhov, or uh, Theodore Ward, or, or any, war, any, any role I take on is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, what I did is separate myself from him and just took on his play as I would approach any with, with, with uh, you know, respect. And, 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 you know, just try to, try to do my best. So when were you first introduced to his work? 1983, I walked in, uh, snuck into the court. The snuck in? <laughs> I didn't have the money to get, in, to get that full ticket, so I snuck in at wow. intermission, and I saw this play called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and I saw a celebration of my culture that I was so intimately familiar with, and I just said, I don't know what I have to do to be a part of it, but whatever I have to do, I was going to make that sacrifice and be there. So I pursued August and 
even Lloyd Richards as, as a teacher and director who's the greatest director and probably a human being, a one, one of the greatest human beings I'd ever encountered. And I just told him, I want to be with you. I've got to go get coffee or sweep the floor. Can I be in the room? And eventually I found my way in the room in seven guitars. I'm what did they make of you initially? Well, they had heard about me. You know, mm -hmm. I was at the Negro Ensemble at the time doing Soldiers Play and then Jelly's Last Jam on Broadway and so forth. So they knew, they had heard that there was a little tornado going around and they had to <laughs> just try to figure out what to do with him and they found a way to incorporate me into what they were doing and I'm blessed, forever blessed for that. Wow, that you was actually a, won a Tony for playing Canewell in won a Tony, Guitars. Won a Tony and, and uh, was really uh, uh, fortunate to receive a, a lot of accolades for that. You know, which all I wanted to do was do the work. And August always said, you got the right to the work. That's it. Mm -hmm. And the accolades that come afterward, they're just something I guess you add on. But I never look forward to that or, or work toward that. What I work to is uh, truth. You've got a right to the work. That's incredible. Like that. mm -hmm. Do you remember the first work you did? Or, and what made you want to be an actor to begin with? Well, uh, I came up in a room and house. I don't know if you ever saw my movie Lackawanna Blues, which mm -hmm. I produced oh, yeah. and wrote. Yeah. Yeah. I came up in a room and house with, with most people. They were illiterate. And they told their histories and their stories orally, which is mm -hmm. the, the African-American tradition, the griots, you know, so people told stories. So I became a storyteller like the, the gentlemen and the ladies that had raised me. And so I just loved telling stories. And because I was mischievous, the <laughs> teachers put me in plays and I was a good reader. And uh, one thing led to another scholarships and, and awards. And, 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 you know, I went through universities and eventually got my doctorate in uh, two master's degrees and a bachelor's and all through theater. And I found that I could change people's lives just through my art. And that's been, been the, my driving force, that I can make a difference in the imp imp impression of my people through mm -hmm. my art. Wow. You actually went on to write, star, and direct Lackawanna Blues and played 20 characters? No, I didn't direct it. George oh. C. Wolfe, my George friend C. George Wolf C. Wolfe directed it. Theater. I wrote and produced it with Halle Berry. With, ha with Halle Berry? Wow. Yes. Really? So what made you decide to take on such an no doubt arduous mission. <laughs> but to, to a write uh, Lackawanna Blues? Uh -huh. It was a play uh, at the public theater and it was sold out uh, for 10 weeks and then I went on a 14 month tour and it was sold out. And uh, a lot of producers approached me um, and asked me what I'm making into a movie. And I said, no, because I'm making more money touring it and I don't want anybody <laughs> else's opinion. Right. And, and finally, uh, my friends talked sense into me and said, you know, it will reach millions of people as a movie where you, you're reaching tens of thousands in the play. And all I wanted to say is thank you to my mother and, and all the black women that had been the pillars of our community. And so uh, it, my selfishness had to go to aside and just let me see if I can have more impact, you know, by making it into a movie. And, and as, as you see, as we all can see, that it, it was very successful. And it, and it also gave African-American women real strong roles, which I rarely see. We had Essie Patha on the show a few weeks ago, and she said that experience just changed her career. It was amazing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it changed all of our careers. Mm -hmm. So when you were doing it, when you were first creating and writing, did you know it was going to be so well received? No, I don't, I don't look at that. I, all I can look at is what I do then. Mm -hmm. did, did, did I give it my all? Did I do my best? Was I honest? Was I truthful? Did I pray hard enough? Did I work hard enough? And did I make it happen? And, and all I knew, that's what I can control. I mm -hmm. I can't control after I, after I put it in the can. The people spoke after that, but prior to that, I had my say because I did my work. Mm. Now you made your debut in Jelly's Last Jam, Broadway debut. That's my with my with my best friend Gregory Hines. Mm -hmm. Jelly's Last Jam was my Broadway debut. The legendary Gregory Hines. What was it like working with him? And do you remember your first night on stage? Gregory Hines, Gregory Hines was the epitome of what it meant to have to be gracious and be a star. Mm. Gregory taught me a lot about life, about manhood, about uh, being in the public eye and how to, how to conduct myself. And not only that, he was probably the most talented individual I'd ever met in my life. Oh. He could sing, dance, act, write, and he was an advocate for all things that were right. And you know, Gregory was just beautiful. So to be with him and have him take me under his wing, uh, I was in both the movies he directed. Uh, he was just a good friend and an example to me. I'm just so blessed in his career, you know. Mm -hmm. And since that big debut, you went on to star in dozens of films, television shows, plays. What do you think is your favorite medium to work with? I'm, I'm, I'm a stage actor by, by heart and by mm -hmm. trade. Everything else I've ever done has come from the stage. You know, I've, I've lived in New York for 30 uh, plus years, and each year of those 30 years I've been on stage. I know that the spotlight isn't as large as if I was doing movies and people recognize me from Shaft or or Devil's Advocate or American Gangster, but my heart is, is stage, and it's simply because I'm whole on stage. I'm not playing a persona, an attitude, or a piece of me. Mm -hmm. I'm all of me on stage, and that's my home. That's where I'm most comfortable. That's where I get to celebrate us the most, the biggest. I'm the editor, 
you know, and, and I'm the truth, and nobody in any editing room says, no, this is the best of what you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get to determine that. So if you love being on stage so much, what made you step behind the curtain and start doing, directing more plays? Because I wanted to create opportunities for my people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell my stories. If we don't tell our stories, we let somebody else hold up the measuring stick, which we will never measure up if somebody else is holding that stick. Mm -hmm. So I had to put the measuring stick in my hand and create opportunities for my own community. Now, Vanity Fair says this is a banner year for black male actors. What do you feel about that declaration? <laughs> <laughs> You, know, you laugh. Why? <laughs> because listen, I, I'm, I don't. I don't need statements, and, and I, I need. I need advocacy, advocacy. I need people to get in the trenches and work. I need us to take hold of our careers, our future, our stories, and we need to come together collectively and trust each other. There's so many stories. You, you know, we can. When are we going to tell the Harlem Renaissance? I've been trying to tell the Harlem Renaissance for, for 10 years, and I'm not going to tell it in two hours. I need five parts, two hours apiece. Wow. I want to tell the story. Why can't we collectively come together, the Tylers and the Oprahs and the Denzels and the Sam Jacksons? Why can, not, can we not tell the greatest aspects of our, our history? The Harlem Renaissance when we were kings again. Can we tell that story? Y'all listening? Y'all watching? This is Ruben Santiago Hudson. Call me. I want to be a part of that. I want to make it happen. And I'm, in, I'm, on the, I'm on the battlefield by myself, it seems like. Hmm. Why know? do you think that is? I don't know. Everybody's, it's like crabs in a barrel. Everybody's trying to be that producer, that director, that star. Let's do a community. Let's build the, the villages all around us. Mm -hmm. So when we're gone, the statements that we need to make are, are, are made and our next generation can make their statements. You know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a battle, but hey, I'm up for the task. I want to fight. Oh, well, besides that fight, what else is up for you next? Up next, I'm directing uh, the Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, Chiara Hudes, her play, This Boricua Sister, this mm. incredible. She won a Pulitzer last year. I'm directing her play at Second Stage. Okay. Uh, then I go back, hopefully, to do Low Winter Sun for AMC in Detroit. And then I'll finish writing and producing my next movie, or first movie. So it's like a long, I, I try to book myself two years down the line and I will continue to fight for the Harlem Renaissance with all my heart and passion. And then the next big August Wilson is Jitney on Broadway. Okay, well as soon as the Harlem Renaissance gets booked, you come here and release it first. Right? Please, <laughs> okay. please, I want, I want all of us in there, man. All right, and where can we check out How I Learned What I Learned? How I Learned What I Learned is at the Signature Theater at uh, 42nd and 10th. It's off Broadway. We'll run it right now to December 29th. Oh. The tickets are, uh, a new block of tickets just went on sale. I know you'll go online and say it's all mm -hmm. sold out. There's some, it's not. We just put a new block on sale. We might put one more block on sale. Come see it. That sounds like a great holiday gift, yes, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for being here. It's been my pleasure. Thank okay. you. All right, we look forward to it. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.